Welcome to everyone to our webinar today. This webinar is given by MBF Bioscience, and my name is Dan Peruzzi, and I'm here with my colleague Jeff Springer. Good morning, Good. Jeff. Good afternoon. Hello. Good to see you today. Uh, the title of today's webinar is Reconstructing and Analyzing Neurons with Neurolucida and Its New Automated Advancements. Before we start into this, we're going to give you a little bit of of history of MBF, MBF Bioscience, also known as Micro Brightfield. The company traces its roots back all the way to 1963 when the first computerized microscope was developed by Hendrik van der Loos and Edmund Glazer. The company was formed 25 years ago in 1987 where Dr. Glazer and his son Jack Glazer decided to develop software to computerize, not only computerize the acquisition of dendritic structures, but the entire process. These images you're seeing below, the left image is of Dr. van der Loos. The middle image is of a computerized microscope they developed in the 1970s. And then finally, the one at the right is really the start of the company. That's Dr. Glazer with a PC version of the software uh, running on a microscope. The first products that the company developed were Neurolucida for tracing neurons. Um, you're still in use today and under active development, and also Lucivid. Lucivid is a device which can project the image of the computer screen into the microscope's optical path, so that as you look through the oculars, you can have the computer screen overlaid and then trace directly by looking through the microscope. Okay, Jeff, we should also mention that um, you and I have been with the company roughly 10 years, and I spent 10 years before that actually using Neurolucida to trace neurons, to trace them manually. Yeah, so Dan is um, an, an expert, uh, a neuroscientist, and uh, my background is in um, electrical engineering and computer science. So this is very typical with how we work at MBF. We couple neuroscientists together with uh, computer scientists, people develop these applications. So today, MBF is number one in integrated systems for neuron tracing and stereo stereological analysis. We have our products, Neurolucida and Stereo Investigator. We have over a 1,000 labs worldwide using our products. Some of the development that we do with Neurolucida has been supported by the NIH through their SBIR, that Small Business Innovation Research Program. In particular, they've supported us in neuron tracing, developing algorithms for cell detection, and whole slide imaging. We have a very active R&D program here. Uh, we have... Uh, more than 12 people in our software development group alone, four of which are PhDs in computer science, and they work together with the five neuroscience PhDs at MBF to develop these new products. We've had input from our customers for over 25 years, and most of our product development is driven by ideas, suggestions, and even demands from our customers to move the product forward. And we'll be concentrating on mainly the program Neurolucida today. Okay, this is a, um, what we might consider a typical system where you can be set up to reconstruct neurons, to straight to uh, trace neurons. And you can see it, it consists of a modern research microscope. It has a camera on the top, a digital camera. That's used to bring the image to the screen. So you can trace neurons while you're looking at the image under the microscope. For today's demonstration, we've actually captured images, both single images and image stacks, and we're going to demonstrate the capability, capabilities of the program on images today. We also see in this picture a motorized stage. What's not showing but is present is a Z meter that keeps track of where you are in the Z position. So when we're using the system to collect data, we're doing it in three dimensions, and that's a really powerful feature of the system. So one thing worth noting is that Neurolucida is available in a couple of different configurations. There's a workstation configuration which you run on your computer on acquired images. So you move images from your microscope system over to the computer and then you can trace the images. There's another version of Neurolucida which includes microscope control and that's what Dan was talking about where you trace directly say on a bright field microscope looking at perhaps a Golgi stained um, image of neurons and then you're tracing directly on the slide and the computer is capturing or digitizing the structure. We also have um, a product line uh, that handles whole slide imaging, what we call uh, virtual slides. This is our virtual tissue line, and the idea here is that you take an entire slide, here you see one at 0.08, with multiple sections, multiple brain sections of a mouse brain, 
but you're you're capturing that slide or digitizing it at high magnification, 40, 60, or 100x. And so all of that is stored in a single image that can be viewed at multiple resolutions. So that image is actually made up of very many uh, microscope fields. Yeah, this is thousands upon thousands of different image planes all, all stitched and merged together into a single image at multiple resolutions. This is known as a whole slide image. So here we see, you know, you start at the whole slide image. If you take a single section um, down to something like the anatomical detail at 5x, and then finally at the cellular level at 20x. So the idea is that you can zoom in or out and do your analysis or reconstructions from a single whole slide image. Okay, and this is similar to how our seminar is going to proceed today. Uh, today we're going to show you how the um, how you can use our program Neurolucida to do neuroanatomical reconstruction, so to put in the anatomical regions that are around the neuron. Then we'll zoom up in power and look at neuron tracing, and then we'll go to an even higher magnification. We'll look at images that were captured at an even higher magnification to look at automated spine detection. And then we'll look at how to detect particles that could be putative synapses that are near processes. Right, so we're starting with this, with the idea that we're starting at a low magnification on bright field images. We'll show you some Golgi images and we're going to work our way through to high magnification on a confocal microscope where we're doing spine and, and synapse detection. Okay, so this is an example of contour mapping. You can use our program Neurolucida at low power to trace in anatomical regions. We can see that's been done on the left. It's also been done on the right. You can also use our program Neurolucida to mark the uh, position of cells or any other particle you want to keep track of. And so that's what you're seeing on the right. Those blue circles are marking uh, cells. Okay, so these are examples of anatomical reconstructions. And on this next slide, uh, we can also see an example of an anatomical reconstruction in our program. And at this point, I'd like to switch over to our program and show you how this can be done, how at low power we can either manually or automatically trace, in, trace these contours to represent the anatomical regions. Okay, so let's switch over to Neurolucida. And Dan, you can uh, take it away. Okay, so I, I've opened an image in our program Neurolucida, and the first thing I'm going to do is zoom way out so you can see what this is an image of. So I took an image on the microscope using a camera, and I took an image of a brain section, and there's actually a cell here. We can see it at this low power. Uh, maybe you can make it out, maybe you can't. There is a Golgi stained cell here, and we're going to reconstruct this. We're going to trace it. But before we do that, we're going to start at low power and put in some anatomical regions. So this is a small virtual slide that you captured, right? I, I see on the right in the image organizer the, the size is like 4,300 by 2,600 pixels. So this, this is a sort of a, a low-resolution virtual slide that you're working with. That's right, Jeff. There's maybe eight or ten uh, fields of view that went into making this virtual slide and you can't even see where the borders are, so I think it did a pretty good job. Okay, so now I'm going to give an example of how you can manually trace an anatomical region. Okay, manually tracing is very simple in the program. You just use your mouse and left click along the border. You can see this red line that I'm clicking with, with the mouse. I'm using my eyes to look at the border and I'm using my hand to trace this. That's what we mean by manual tracing. And take a look at this yellow dotted line. This is called our auto move area. And so as soon as I click outside of this yellow dotted line, it's going to center the tracing and also center the image and this will work when I am working on a live image from the camera as well as a captured image so to auto trace uh, excuse me to manually trace I just click along like this now we have a feature 
which is called automatic contour tracing. And let's give that a try. I've been manually tracing, which is click after click. Okay, and so you can see the automatic contouring dialog box off. And what I'm going to do is teach this uh, subroutine about where this border is by doing a couple clicks here. And when it's learned about what the border looks like, I'm going to just click this play button and let it automatically trace. And sometimes it has problems depending on how these parameters have been set up. And uh, kind of the beauty of the way we set up these automatic uh, tools is you can switch between the automatic tracing and now we find the automatic tracing is having problems. So I'm just going to switch right back into manual tracing get over the trouble spot and then turn the automatic tracing back on again. And so it's having trouble figuring out um, where that PIA has been ripped off, but it figured that out fine. Right, so you'll see that sometimes it pauses and it actually backs up and makes another run at it and this to is, keep going. And this is much faster than the human can do it. And we'll notice that we have a setting here when it gets within 20 pixels of the beginning, it closes up the contour. So this contour has been automatically traced. And I have a finished product where I have traced three contours that are around the neuron that we're going to trace in a second and I'd like to show you that. So I went ahead and I traced three contours. Right, so this is three serial sections, right? Yeah, thanks for pointing that out, Jeff. I use what's called our serial section manager, and I was able to tell the program what level each contour is at. And this is what the finished product looks like. So I've traced three contours. The neuron that we're going to trace in a minute is, is right over here. And we can rotate this. Uh, you can see that I've traced the caudate on both sides and the hippocampi and the uh, fimbria of the, of the fornix right here. And so you can put in as many anatomical regions as you want at low powers to um, let your colleagues know uh, the anatomical context of the neuron. Let me show you, this is only three sections that I've traced, and we're going to trace the neuron in a second. But before we go to that, let me show you um, a 3D reconstruction that's much more extensive. And we can see the, um, the tracings that have been done, but what I'm going to do is turn on what we call our 3D visualization to put a skin on this. This is what I was just showing you before also. And we can see that for aesthetics it has put a skin on this and we can rotate it and we can actually make certain contours transparent if we want to. And so we can kind of see into the brain. And so our goal is to reconstruct a neuron, but at low power we can put in as much anatomical context as we want to. Yeah, so, so one thing that people aren't seeing here, like if you look at this image in the upper left, you see all these contours and you think, oh my god, you know, how am I going to put that all together? You can load all of the serial sections and you can restrict the display of these contours to just the section that you're working on. And so you can also align sections with each other and, you know, align these contours together. So the, the process of reconstructing this entire section is not as, as daunting as it might look from the image here. So Dan has just showed you an example of he's just showing you now with this icon just turning on one current display section. Okay. Let's move on to reconstructing a neuron. And so we can see on the left side here, uh, one of the sections which I traced to show the um, anatomical regions. And those were images that were captured using a 2.5 objective. Now I'm going to switch back to our program and open up an image stack. So it's going to be 140 image planes through the Z. And these were collected using a 20 uh, objective. Okay. So we just dragged a file into the open window and that file was or is an image stack. I'm going to use my page up and page down buttons on my keyboard to kind of to, to focus through this image stack. And as I hit the page up and page down, you can see at the bottom it's keeping track of which image we're at. And you can 
you can focus through all 140 images in the stack. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on a projection. So I'll go to the image menu and I'll pick minimum intensity projection. Now it shows all 140 images together. So I'm going to take off that minimum intensity projection and I'm going to focus to the cell body and I'm going to show how an, exa an example of how to manually trace in our program. Uh, when I trace contours, I'm just going to use my left mouse and I'm going to click on the cell body. So you can do this on an image and, and you can do this under the microscope as well, right? That's right, and we're doing it on images right now, but I could certainly do it on an image that's live from the microscope. So that's how, you, how to trace a cell body. You can focus up and down and trace as many of those as you want. And when it's time to trace the process, I'm going to go to dendrite, and I'm going to use my mouse wheel to show the diameter of the dendrite, and I'm going to click and focus and change the diameter. And the more you focus, uh, the more frequently you focus on the point you're about to click on, and the more frequently you change the diameter, the better of a model you'll pull out of here the better reconstruction you'll get. When you come to a bifurcating node, you right click and tell it there's a split there and I'm focusing. I won't trace this whole thing. When you come to an ending, you click ending and it refocuses back and then you keep tracing and click ending. So that's that's a simple way. So so when you when you say yes. refocuses back, are you, what do you mean by that? Um, so I came to the ending and uh, came to the end of one process, and when I clicked ending, it took us back to the node, and it focused on that node and got you ready to trace again. All right. So, so that was the last bifurcation that you made, right? So every time you make a bifurcation and you continue to do an ending, it takes you back, so you can continue for at the last split, if you like. That's right. Okay. So that's an example of manual neuron tracing. Okay. Now we should show automated contour tracing. Well, what we might want to do, uh, we can do this now quickly. I will show it as we get through it, is that, that even though you're clicking on this and you're focusing up and down, it's creating a 3D model. Yes. Right, so we can do that. or we can, we'll, we'll show that later, I think. So let's, um, let's switch back here. So th let me close this up. Okay. So I've just given examples of manual contour tracing at low power in order to put in the anatomical regions and manual neuron tracing at higher, po higher power in order to actually trace the neurons. So now we're going to jump over to confocal, and um, this is a, uh, a filled cell, Lucifer yellow. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to trace this a couple of different ways. I'm going to do it, uh, I'm not going to do it manually, although you could, just the way Dan did it. Uh, I'm going to do it using what's called interactive. So that's where I am going to click along a process, but uh, I, I'm really going to guide the computer about where I want to go. And then I'm going to use uh, fully automatic tracing to trace the entire cell in one shot. So now what you're going to see is the auto neuron module uh, that is an optional module for Neurolucida. So Jeff, we could do this automatic tracing on the Golgi Brightfield images. Right, you can, do, you can do the fully automatic and you can do the interactive tracing on Golgi. It's going to depend on the quality of your image, the quality of the Golgi staining. Okay, so, but we just want to mix things up a little and we're going to show the automatic tracing on a fluorescently labeled neuron. Right. So here, let me go and find, uh, first let's jump back to uh, Neurolucida, and the first thing I'm going to do is just going to load an image stack. Uh, we'll load this. Let me switch over to an appropriate lens. Uh, yeah, I think this was done at 40x. So let me just show you that this is a maximum intensity projection. So what you're seeing is, uh, we'll leave the auto move on I guess for now. So you're seeing the cell in a projection mode, right? So this is a 2D projection. We take the maximum intensity of all the pixels in the stack, all right? And in this case, we have 154 image planes in this stack. If you bring up the 3D visualization, that's this little cube icon over here. Um, you can rotate this around. We have a couple of modes here where you can slide the XY view up and down. You can create uh, cross-cut planes here and you can slide those over. You can visualize this. You can also visualize this with the, uh, with the um, model of the neuron at the same time. Uh, or you can flip over to a 3D mode, which is what I'm doing now. So now it's building a 3D reconstruction and you can rotate this around. So uh, just a little quick question about hardware. Um, 
this computer is using a hundred and twenty dollar graphics card you know something you buy off the shelf for computer gaming so it's not like you need any kind of you know super elaborate computer system to do this so that's the 3d view so we'll start auto neuron i'll click this icon at the top right now oh i'll, I'll leave the auto move on i'm going to pick a new configuration it's fluorescence I'm going to measure the maximum process diameter. This is a hint to the algorithm about what sort of metric it needs to separate things that are soma sized from things that are dendrite size. So I just do two clicks to measure across the widest process. That's approximate. It doesn't have to be exact. Again, it's just a hint to the algorithm. So this option allows you to trace the entire image. If you had an image with multiple neurons in it and you only wanted to trace a certain part of it, you can uncheck this box and you can actually create a contour that you choose to trace things inside the contour or outside. So we have an exclusion or inclusion or exclusion. And you can also limit the Z depth range. We'll trace the entire image. And the next step, we're going to trace the cell body. I'm going to drop the sensitivity a little bit. All you need to do is click Find All. You'll see the progress bar running at the bottom. This can take anywhere from 10 to 30 seconds. It's already complete. You'll see the pink contours here. We'll flip over to the 3D mode again. You'll see that I've created this 3D object, and you'll so also see that I, that corresponds to the planes. Yep, I'm just going to flip over and it here. It certainly would take a human a lot longer to trace that many cell bodies. Right. So when you did when you did the uh, a um, similar cell, yeah, the Golgi one, and we should we should probably I think that's something that we skipped is showing yeah. the full manual tracing yeah, of the can, Golgi. We can compare that to your right. auto tracing of this. We can we can go back and show that. Um, so here we have the cell body. Um, the next step is seed placement. So you see these little yellow dots appearing. And what seeds are, are they're, they're a way for the algorithm to very quickly explore the image volume and tag where it thinks the dendrites are. So again, this doesn't need to be exact. No need to spend time placing seeds everywhere. We have an opportunity to adjust the sensitivity in the next step. We could increase the sensitivity here, validate the seeds again. It's really up to you. This will, this will work fine, you'll see. It doesn't really matter. The next step now is the actual neuron tracing. And you have two options here. You have a fully automatic mode and you have an interactive. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tra trace this interactively to start. And then what I'll do is I'll close this auto neuron. I'll start it up again and show you that we'll do it fully automatically with, with the same settings. So let's choose interactive. You have a bunch of options here that I'm not going to go through, except this one here where you can actually switch back and forth between interactive and manual tracing. I'll turn off the projection image. I think that's a good point to stress, Jeff. Just like when I was contour tracing, I could easily switch between automatic contour tracing and manual contour tracing. You can also switch between automatic and manual neuron tracing. Okay, so, so what, you know, I just saw that someone had asked a question, I think it's appropriate to answer this, is, is how do I focus up and down? In Neurolucida, when you load an image stack, you can use the page up and down keys. You can also use the mouse to focus. If I click on this icon, I can switch back and forth between changing the size of the mouse cursor while tracing or focusing up and down. So let me click that right now. Here I'm going to focus up and down. Now, when I start this, let me just reduce the size of this thing. Hold on. It's a little big. I'll make this little crosshairs. You all see this little um, red circle appearing. Well, when that appears, I can drop a point. So I'm going to drop a point here. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. And you'll see, as I move up and down, the computer is automatically changing image planes. That's not me focusing. That's so the computer. So this is interactive, and this is what I was talking about. You don't have to stay on the line. You can move beside it. You can trace along it. If you extend beyond the auto move box, it'll recenter for you, as it just did. So you're not hitting the page up and page down keys. No, I'm just I'm just doing this. The interactive mode is focusing it for you. Right, and so here I'll drop another branch here, and I'll follow this one out. So this is a lot faster than the manual approach, but not as fast as the fully automatic approach, which you'll see in a few minutes. So here, let's drop a uh, point right there. And we'll trace this branch out. Now, you'll notice that I'm doing this here. Let me just escape. I'm doing this and allowing the focus. You can switch back to the uh, projection mode and just operate from the projection mode. So I can click along here, and you'll see. There we go. So you're There's, looking at the projection, yeah. but it's still working on the stack. i got to zoom in a little bit here. Try this. So if I click, say, this point, you'll see 
that I'm, I'm, I'm tracing along this branch. Now, it's doing this using the projection just to display, but it's still doing all this in 3D. So then if I pop up this image again, you can see that, that, that these branches were moved in, they're moving up and down in 3D, and then you move this split plane up and you can see right there where they coincide with the image. But I'll show you the full 3D thing once we've done the automated mode. So you can continue in this mode. Um, let me just close the workflow. I'll throw away the data, but I'll, I'll keep the image where it is. So we'll start with um, with no data. Let's zoom back out. Now we're going to go through this in fully automatic mode. So again, start up auto neuron. Rather than doing a new, I'll just pick my last configuration. Click my next step. We want the entire image. We want the somas. So I'm just clicking next step now, and it's going to automatically execute those steps. The other thing you can do is you can actually just click on the last step in the workflow, and it'll run the whole thing for you. So you see it's done the soma. It's put these seed points down. We'll go to our next step here. We're going to now keep it in automatic mode. I'm going to change over to a simpler tracing algorithm. And now I click trace all. And you want to watch the progress bar down here. It would take a human about two hours to trace this neuron. Yeah, well, it depends how old they are, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> you and me, two hours for sure. All right, I'm just going to change the color of these so you can see them. Uh, select all. What I should say is in manual tracing mode, it will take around two hours. Yeah. Uh, here. So you see this, like, and now let's say you don't like this result. Like, it didn't go very far on these processes, and that's probably because our sensitivity is not high enough. So I just press clear cleared out all of the trace uh, processes. I'll crank this up to, say, 90. I'll do another trace. The progress bar is running at the bottom. So this is sort of iterative. Now you can see that it's traced much further along. We'll do this thing where I'm just selecting all the dendritic processes again. I want to make them a color so you can see that when I move this into 3D. Now I'll pop up the model. And it did trace it in three dimensions. It did. And um, here, let me just let me just show you the full image here, and I'll play around with the settings so you can really see. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Here, we want to turn that off. Uh, did we get that? Hmm. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so that's a great way to compare the tracing to the image from any angle. So this is the, so you see the surface reconstruction here superimposed over the image. I can also reconstruct that, put a skin on that cell, turn off the contours. I can cap the ends of the cell. So you get an idea that you get this tracing. And then what is great about this product is that after you've done this automated or interactive reconstruction, you can still go into Neuralucida here and you can edit, you can remove branches, you can splice them together. That's what this, this special editing tool is down here. You can do a little bit of manual tracing. You can do additional issue. manual tracing, right. So we have fully from, so from the manual through interactive to the fully automated tracing. So there are a lot of options here in Auto Neuron. We could do an, a webinar on Auto Neuron itself. So one of the things you might wonder is, you know, why do we have three modes of tracing, this manual, this interactive, and this fully automatic? Well, you may want to use interactive when you only want to trace one branch or one process. So you'll see later on what we do when we do, um, we go into um, spine detection and synapse marking that we only need a couple of branches traced. So it can be faster to do that in interactive than fully automatic. There may be some images that you can't trace interactively or in fully automated mode depending on image quality. So in that case, you're going to want to be able to do manual tracing. So we think it's really important to offer that full spectrum to be able to go from manual through to fully automatic and use it where it's appropriate. I could also picture doing fully automatic tracing and fixing that with the interactive and the manual tracing. We've shown how to trace anatomical regions, and we've shown how to trace neurons, and now we're going to go up in magnification and take a look at detecting spines. Yeah, before, I think before we do that, Dan, I'm looking at this slide, I think what we want to show very quickly um, is, you know, 
well, okay, you've traced this model. How do you get the analytical data out of there? We're going to fire up NeuroLucida Explorer. That comes with um, NeuroLucida. And we'll take that existing model, and we'll load this in here. And Dan, maybe you want to talk a little bit about the analytical capabilities. Okay, thanks, Jeff, for opening the tracing that we did in our uh, in the sister program to NeuroLucida Explorer uh, to NeuroLucida. It's called NeuroLucida Explorer, and this is where we display the data and also get the analysis for the data. We can do all kinds of analysis on branch structures. Pretty much everything that researchers have wanted in the last 20 years uh, that's reasonable, we have put in here. We can do basic analyses like shoal analysis. So I'm going to set this up. Uh, to consider the dendrites and it's going to use um, concentric spheres that are at intervals of 10 microns and so these red lines show the concentric spheres and what th this is a three-dimensional analysis and it will give you the total dendritic length within each one of these shells that are made up by the concentric sphere. So it's not cumulative how much total dendritic length is in each one of these layers. It's showing you the total dendritic length in each layer. And we can see the data right here, the total dendritic length in each one of these concentric spheres. Is there a question? Uh, we have uh, other analyses, all kinds of analyses. I'm just going to show you a few. Here is a stylized way to represent the neuron. And this is called a dendrogram. So this is a, another way to compare one neuron to another. And one thing I think it's important, important to mention here is that when you trace this manually, interactively, or automatically, it's all saved in the same NeuroLucida data format file. So you can go back and forth. It, you know, it's not like we have one format for automatic and one format for manual. It's all the same format, fully editable with a NeuroLucida. And you can see all the different types of branch structure analysis. I'll show a simple one here where each dendrite is, uh, or the dendrite is showing up on the left, and uh, let's see, I grabbed the wrong analysis that I wanted to show. I wanted to show a segment analysis. Uh, the definition of a segment is the part of the dendrite between nodes. So from here to here is a segment. And this will show each dendrite. We call the dendrites trees. Here they are listed here. It shows their order, primary, secondary, or tertiary. And here is kind of the business part of the data. This is the length of each one of those segments. And this is a three-dimensional measurement. Just to give you an idea of how many analyses we have in here, like I said, everything that people have wanted, that researchers have wanted in the past 20 years. So you have a lot of ways to analyze your dendrites once they are traced. Okay, and we'll come back to this when we, uh, we start doing the spine analysis, which I think is next. It's time to zoom into the level of spine analysis. Okay, so we're on to spine detection and then uh, what we'll call punitive synapse detection. These are two modules. This uh, auto spine module is currently available, and auto synapse will be available uh, this fall. If you're attending the neuroscience meeting uh, this year, this fall in Louisiana, New Orleans, then come and visit us, and you can see this working um, at our trade show exhibit. I'm going to flip over to NeuroLucida. We'll move over to spines. I'm just grabbing a data file that I can present to you. So I'm going to load this data file. And you'll see I have an intensity projection, maximum intensity projection. Now you'll notice there's a blue line in here. This is a dendrite that I've pre-traced in the interest of saving a little bit of time during our demo. You can trace this manually or you can trace it interactively or automatically, whatever you like. Then when you start up Autospine, the idea is you're going to use a program that runs a detector. It's a donut, if you like, or a toroid, down the center of this branch, and it'll detect anything within a certain uh, inner and outer radius. We call the inner radius the, the surface clearance, and the outer radius sort of the maximum distance from the dendrite. 
So we pick up all of these spines, and then what we do is we tag each one of them as a separate volume, and then we report uh, with a spine density analysis and spine volume. Now let's just have a look at this very quickly. I just want to show you the image. We'll look at this in uh, 3D. So this is what we're dealing with here. Let me tell you a little bit about this. This is a GFP from a confocal image stack taken at 63x. It is not deconvolved. So we'll open up Auto Spine off the menu. Very similar to Auto Neuron, we follow a, a workflow process for these tools. There's four steps. I'm going to start a new configuration. It's fluorescence. Step number two, we're going to run a very quick test. We'll test on a few points on a branch, so I'll click this option, and then I just draw a rectangle. It selected some points along the branch. Maybe in, trying for a representative region or something? I, I think you're just mm -hmm. trying to see, is this thing going to work at all with the settings that I'm going to try? Okay. All right, so that rather than, you know, think of it, if it was more complicated than this, you have five or six branches, you want to test it on a small piece first and not wait for the whole thing to complete to find out that you have the wrong settings. So this surface clearance, let me talk to you about this a little bit. The idea here is that you don't want to pick up things like this part of the dendrite in the toroid. So you want the toroid to be a little bit bigger than the branch. You want it to clear it. So a good number for clearance is something like a quarter micron. And then you want to go to the outermost distance where, you know, sort of the full length of a spine, and we'll use something like three microns. You can click those buttons that say measure an image, and then you click two points on the line, and that'll give you um, a, a measurement in microns. So that's a little bit of a shortcut. Um, so it'll look for spines uh, in the range between a quarter micron and three microns. Yeah, off okay. the surface of the dendrite. Okay. So now you run a test, and we'll flip over to what we call solid view here. And let me just dim down the image a little bit so you can see, yeah, we're picking up spines, we're marking them. Then we can go, now we can detect all spines. So that'll proceed across. You'll see the progress bar at the bottom running. Another 20, 30 seconds. If you're not picking up all the spines that you want to, say, oh, I'm missing some, you can change your sensitivity settings. You can make it more sensitive or less sensitive. Same. I've got it on 50% here. Same idea as with auto neuron. Right. If you put zero, you're getting no spines. If you push it too far, you may be picking up um, objects larger than a spine. You may be overrepresenting them. And this is something that you'll have to visually inspect. Oh, I had a question here. Someone picked this up. Very observant. It says, huh. you're working in 63X, yet, yet you have a 40X in Neurolucida lens selected. So what happened when we loaded this stack is that the, um, that the uh, X and Y pixel size in microns is included with the image stack. So the 40X changes my view, but it doesn't change the scaling and the data. So while you should be working with the correct objective size, uh, in this case 63X, if you make a mistake, um, that's not a critical error when, when you're loading, uh, preloading an image where you've already specified the scale. But I do want to stress that's an excellent point. Um, mostly when you're working in this program, the software lens has to match the hardware lens. Right, when you're acquiring the images and so on, I, yes, okay. definitely. I got my hands slapped, I'm in trouble now. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's, um, let's move on. I'm actually happy someone picked that up. I could have said nothing. <laughs> Anyway, let's have a look at this thing in, um, in 3D. So what you're seeing here is sort of a stick model. And what we'll do is we'll turn on the surface reconstruction. And this is with a single image plane. Let me, let me turn on the full image representation. And now you can see where the spines have been marked along here. And again, if I change the sensitivity, I may be picking up different things. If I change the distance out from the dendrite, uh, I may pick up spines, some spines that I'm missing. But overall, we're doing a pretty good job of, of um, capturing the spine volumes. So, and, and a much faster job than could be done manually. Yeah, you can do this manually. The tricky part um, is, is to get the spines all the way around, so the ones that are projecting uh, in the actual direction. So let me just close this down real quick, and I want to bring up NeuroLucid Explorer and show you very quickly. Um, we have this completed spine model, and again, if you go to analysis and branch structure, now you look at spines, same idea. Oh, 
hold on a second. Let me close all those, try that again. We need to deselect everything first, then pick these two. And so we have a list of the spines. Uh, we have what tree they're on, their branch order. So that's every spine listed. Right, there. length to center. We, you know, we basically the length to the center versus the length. One goes to the surface, one goes to the center of the dendrite. You get their position, their volume, their surface area, and then you can have a summary of the number of spines here. Spine density, spines per micron. Right. Yep. Yeah. So spine density measurement as well. So we're on to um, auto synapse. So um, what I'm going to do. This is version ten point. 5.0.2. Uh, you'll notice on the menu there's no auto synapse here. That's in our development version that's going to be released later this year. So I'm going to fire up the new version, which looks looks identical, has a bunch of new features that we'll be covering in a later webinar this fall. And now you'll see that I have auto synapse on the menu. So that's been added. This image Jeff is going to bring up is of a dendrite that's been filled with neurobiotin and visualized. All right, so let's... Uh, and also of many particles which are putative synapses. They've been labeled with V-glut-1 antibody. So the putative synapses are the green particles, and you can see the dendrite also. Yeah, so here I'm just showing you this thing in 3D. Here's the idea. We're going to run a detector similar to autospine down the dendrite in one channel, and we're going to detect the synaptic markers in the green channel. So the dendritic markers in the blue channel, we're going to detect the synapse, synaptic markers in the green channel, and then we're going to report on the position of those markers, and then by the time you see the software in the, in the fall, you'll get the position, uh, not only the position, but the volume uh, surface area of the marker uh, signal as well. So we're going to detect particles that are near the process, and this is done at high power, right, Jeff? Right, this is done at high power. Most okay. of this is done... Uh, this is uh, using a time 63 objective. Yep. So, they, and this, again, this is confocal done on Olympus Flow View uh, 1000 with a numerical aperture, with 60x numerical aperture 1.3. And I want to mention, too, I want to thank um, Dr. Francisco Alvarez, who provided us with this image, not only provided it with us, but has really been guiding us in the development um, of this module to try and, and prepare this, not only for his own research, but for other researchers to use it well. So here we go, autosynapse. Uh, step number one, we're starting a new configuration. We need to tell the software that the synapses or the synaptic markers are in the green channel and the neuron is in the blue channel. If you have more than two channels, this is a two-channel image, if you have more than two, you can just choose those two channels among your multiple channels. Same idea, we'll test this on a whole branch. I'm going to click on the branch here. Um, I, just, when I just clicked the button to turn on the tracing. So this branch was pre-traced. Before I opened up this data file, you could have traced that with interactive mode very quickly in a single channel. So now what we're going to do, it's the same idea. We'll have like a surface clearance of a quarter micron again. And here we'll extend out to say five microns. You can make it three, four, five, whatever you like. We'll run our test. Now what we're doing is we're just seeing, am I detecting anything? Yes, I am. Now, you're looking at a projection of the image, so if you think, oh, well, you've missed quite a bit, keep in mind that not all, not all of those synaptic markers are close enough to the dendrite in Z. I'll show you this thing in 3D as soon as we're done. So now detect all the synapses. So it's running. If you're happy with the parameters, if go you, ahead. Yeah, if you're happy, I think. Yeah, there it is. It's done, so you can see where we've detected markers. Uh, let's pop open the 3D view. You see the branch here. You see the markers. I'm going to try and show this to you in a way that you can see the coincidence of the, the markers, the signal, the branch. So let's go here. All right, so you should see there's a red sphere here marking this synaptic marker. And you'll say, oh, well, you're not marking that one. Well, let's rotate that a little bit, and you'll see, oh, well, that's quite, quite far away. This, is, this one's tiny here. There's another one. There's one. There's one here. There's one close by, so all within, say, four microns. And the other way you can look at this, if you like, is you can look at it in slice mode. 
and use this to compare the data. So here we're moving up and down. So you'll see that where the blue branch is close to the marker, or close to the synaptic marker, we're placing down a red marker there. So that's the putative synapse detection, auto synapse. And obviously, if you didn't like the results, you can go through and change your parameters. Yep, you can. Um, so again, this will be released um, fall of this year. It's August now. Well, it's August tomorrow, so uh, you'll see this ready in October. I'm going to just switch back to the, the slides. We covered spine analysis. All right, well, uh, Jeff, in the last 20 years since I've been using the program, 20 years ago I could only trace manually. The program really has come a long way. So with Neurolucida, you can reconstruct anatomical regions from serial sections. Dan showed you that. You can trace neurons in multiple uh, ways, manually, interactive, automatically. And then we showed you that you can do manually under the microscope, interactively and automatically from image stacks. Bright field fluorescence and confocal modality supported. You can quantify spines. We showed you auto spine, and we also showed you auto synapse. You can perform quantitative analysis with Neurolucid Explorer, and finally, you can visualize those models in 3D. Thank you very much for your attention today. Uh, we just want to acknowledge um, really the input from our customers over 25 years. They're really who drive the development. I mentioned that at the beginning. And a, and a very special thanks to the NIH, particularly the National Institutes of Mental Health, for sponsoring um, the algorithmic research into our software. You can contact us. We're going to give you the information for contact on the next screen. Right here, you can contact us at info at mbfbioscience.com. You can call us at this phone number, and you can look at some of our demonstrations on the YouTube, MBF Bioscience YouTube channel. Follow us on Facebook, listen to our tweets on Twitter, and there are RSS feeds from our website. Come back, check our website for the next webinar. I'm not sure uh, when the next one is. And on that free trial, we'll help, we'll help set you up with it, and we will help guide you in using it, too. We really appreciate your time listening. Um, we had several hundred people listening in on this webinar today. If you have anything urgent that you need to know or anything particular, call us up, talk to our sales or technical support people or one of our scientists to help you. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure.